it is a great pleasure to come today to talk about her theme with a composer, as I always say, who offers no challenges, only delights. <laughs> and I, let me tell you, just, just looking at his face it makes me smile or titter because I have so many wonderful memories of his musical and dramatic wit and all the delightful things that he does um, with the musical score. Um, and this can uh, obscure his enormous historical importance as a composer. Um, to the average opera lover <clears throat> worldwide, Italian opera written by Italians starts with Rossini in uh, about 200 years ago in the early 19th century. It is true that opera originated in Florence much longer ago than that. It ranked, uh, originated in Florence in the 1590s. But there was no Italian composer who succeeded in leaving uh, to posterity, posterity a standard repertory item until Rossini, until Rossini came along. And um, <clears throat> there was a major rejuvenation of Italian opera in his day, initiated by him, and it led to a golden age of Italian opera um, that was spearheaded by a dynasty of great composers um, after him, there was Bellini, Donizetti, Verdi, and finally Puccini. So this golden age lasted 100 years. And most of the repertory that fills the opera halls of the world belongs to that century of great Italian opera. And Rossini was the first. Um, so uh, the first thing that we're going to do is go over his biography somewhat, which is absolutely fascinating and amazing. He was the greatest operatic prodigy of all time. There is no composer ever who succeeded in composing so many operas of enduring interest at such a young age. And that even means he beat Mozart at that, because Mozart did not compose an opera that's still commonly performed until the age of 24. <laughs> the laggard, <laughs> just Idomeneo of, um, of, of 1780. But at that age, Rossini was already famous um, throughout Italy as, as, a, as, so, as a composer of opera. Um, this, this is where he was born. Of course, his birthplace is still preserved in Pesaro. Um, which is on the Adriatic coast of Italy, in central Italy. And Pizarro, as a, my handout um, biography says, was a possession of the Papal States. Um, that's a huge swathe of central Italy that was ruled by, directly by the Pope. The Pope, you could either call him the absolute monarchy, monarch of the Papal States, or the absolute dictator, whichever term you prefer. That's, he did rule the Papal States directly as a secular ruler. And all of the officials were bishops and priests throughout all the little cities and territories. That's who ran the people's states. <clears throat> um, throughout his youth, Italy experienced considerable political instability due to French invasion and the efforts of liberals in um, all parts of the country to force their rulers to adopt political reforms on the model of French revolutionary ideals. And his father, Giuseppe Herrier, who certainly does not look as humorous as his son, <laughs> Was, was a devoted liberal, an ardent liberal, and himself a professional horn player. And he was in, briefly imprisoned by the papal authorities for subversive activities himself. Um, here's his beautiful mother. His mother was a great beauty, and she was a professional singer. And actually, with a parentage like that, he was immersed in music and learned a great deal from them. Uh, he was a prodigy. Uh, the first record of him participating in a musical performance was at the violist in the small city of Palma in 1801. Um, then a big um, move that came shortly after that, in 1804, the family moved to Bologna. And Bologna still kind of considers him to be their native son, um, because that's where he mainly studied and learned um, how to compose. Um, this is the Piazza Rossini in Bologna, which is named for him. And the building on the right is the conservatory where he studied, which still functions as a conservatory and has been renamed um, in his honor. Um, <clears throat> so he entered this conservatory in 1806. He was one of the most distinguished um, 
students ever to go there, and it was one of the most distinguished musical training institutions in Europe. He did rebel against um, the rigid academic counterpoint that was demanded by the direction. Counterpoint is the art of combining two melodies at once, and it, it's considered to be a very strict and um, um, uh, demanding form of, of composition to cultivate. He didn't think it was fun enough or interesting enough, so he rebelled against it. Uh, but he was definitely considered by his students to be a brilliant, um, a brilliant composer even when he was there. Um, he, as part of his activities, accompanying operatic performances at the keyboard, he was able